Hi, this is Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart, and this is a midday update for uh, Wednesday, January 26, 2022. Uh, it is 2.20 p.m. right now. The uh, Fed uh, meeting is out of the way. Uh, they just issued their announcement. And, of course, Powell will come on and do his uh, dog and pony show here in a little bit with the media. And so that may uh, or likely to cause additional volatility. Uh, remember, we're just fresh off the meeting, so... Um, you know, to take, uh, don't take uh, what you see or take everything you see with a bit of a grain of salt. But uh, as I always talk about, the initial reaction quite often is not the lasting reaction. And whether it is or not, meaning lasting, you know, days or weeks, are we going to go up? But this was the initial reaction. It was a one point, a uh, little over 1% rip straight up in the futures. And again, I've been doing this for so long, and this is almost a guarantee. You're going to see the initial reaction faded and reversed, and then some. Um, so that was, uh, and I'll tell you too, uh, the markets rarely go up more than 3% in a day, and that put us just above the 3% mark. Uh, so uh, I was carrying a light load of longs that I was able to reverse there. And I'm going to just day trade it out of here. And, uh, but I'm going to keep a core position. I've been layering back in as of this morning into my swing accounts um, and uh, just stacking on, and I stacked on some more shorts and uh, I'm talking IRAs longer term stuff and um, I think that's it I think this may be it but I'm going to go over the levels again I don't want to beat a dead horse because I covered these levels this morning but I did want to say that it's over there's a rip there's the uh, immediate fade again that is almost uh, standard operating procedure for a Fed announcement and uh, again the markets are going to have to parse through not only the statement but uh, what, what Powell says in the in the thing now he came across easier, and I've you know I've been a critic uh, of Powell for a long time. The Fed as a whole, and I know others are. Uh, I just cannot believe how how uh, you know still how dovish he is at this point in time, especially relatively speaking compared to um, real yields on Treasuries. Uh, you know that's uh, inflation-adjusted returns, things like that. Uh, one statement out of the um, the uh, release uh, from the the 2 p.m. Uh, comments from the Fed. I want to just say this: uh, this is the first sentence of the second paragraph. The path of the economy continues to depend to depend on the course of the virus. I, I just have to say, are you kidding me? Um, uh, look, I don't know where you're at. Uh, different parts of the country are different. Uh, since the virus hit, the economy down here where I'm at in South Florida has been just literally on fire. Every business owner I know uh, has made, you know, this has been their best year ever. Uh, on, in addition to that, the government threw tons of money at them, stimulus money, PPP uh, funds and, and other things. And again, the demand down here skyrocketing. Again, I know that is somewhat regional. We've had a lot of people from New York, New Jersey, from the big cities move down here after uh, our real estate market's on fire down here and has been. Um, and also, I look around. I you know talk to friends, family, my you know our, ourselves. Uh, I, I see people vacationing everywhere. I got a brother skiing out west right now. I'm with a bunch of friends there, and that's just a common thing. You know, uh, a lot of people that I know have just uh, you know been traveling. Uh, weddings are happening. Happening. Um, look, the pandemic's real, guys. I know that. I just told you I just came off Omicron, what I assume is Omicron, my second round of COVID. I had COVID back when it first hit. That one knocked me on my butt. Um, but uh, this time around, uh, I got Omicron in every single person I know. And again, I know there's exceptions. Uh, it's 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 a mild cold, not even a severe cold. It's nothing worse than a mild cold. And I can tell you, I'm everywhere I go, restaurants, stores, the point I'm trying to make, it, 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 uh, yeah, if some crazy virulent strain came out and was just people were dropping like flies, you know, the healthy and all that, it might change the trajectory of the economy. But uh, the economy is on fire. The economy has been on fire since COVID. And I think it's just ridiculous to even put that line in there. Um, yeah, COVID's here to stay. It's now just like uh, the common cold is a rhinovirus. Um, we are going to have viruses and, and, and we have now COVID. And yes, it does hit certain people with um, pre-existing conditions um, harder than, than a common cold. But then again, the common cold kills you know, many people every year, as does the flu and everything else. So I don't know. I just, I think that's ridiculous. So here's what's going to happen. Here's my takeaway. I'm just rambling here with fundamental thoughts. I think what happened here, you guys heard me say, you know, this has been priced into the charts for a long time. All the 
market breadth deterioration, internal sentiment extremes, divergences, and everything else I've been talking about for months. And then it finally started to, uh, we st it started to play out. The technicals finally started to play out. And all that the media had to chalk this up to is nervousness about the Fed finally, you know, um, embarking on a rate hiking cycle, taking away the uh, the crack cocaine that they've been giving this market for years, the uber low rates. Uh, it's still coming. Uh, they were just a little you know vague on that. Uh, right now, I'm just going to show you technicals and then get back to my thoughts. Here's a potential bear flag. See this impulsive leg down? Looks like we could be flagging here another leg down. If not, I gave you guys levels where to short the 200 days on QQQ and the bottom of the range is there. The bottom of that range on QQQ about 379, 380. Uh, so I'll keep it very, very simple. There are no guarantees. Um, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe the Fed was, I could tell you they came out on the easier side of things from what I've heard so far, but uh, more dovish side of things. But um, that's it. So anywhere from where we're at now, because again, we're at the 200 days on the on the uh, S&P 500. So the, my, my scale in range, um, where I'll continue to layer back, but then uh, not add to, will be anywhere in here. So from where we're at right now, up into and about 380 or so on QQQ, but not above that. At that point, I'm more concerned about scaling out um, because the markets may, this may be just another great buying opportunity. Um, the, the, where I was just going a second ago too, is we finally started to get this. The markets are getting in that panic mode. Uh, every little bounce was being sold into, you know, and again, we bounce where we should have. We hit my first targets on the daily and weekly charts. Um, but I think this is the wake up call. I think it was still that point of recognition. I was saying when we were going down, I just, I was baffled that the, uh, the masses, both the investing public and, uh, professional institutions, hedge funds and pension plans and the likes would, would wait to the 11th hour before we know rate hikes are coming, uh, to start to exit equities. You know, if we're looking at the beginning of a new, a rate hiking cycle, uh, sooner or later, that's going to uh, hurt uh, the stock market. Now, when you go from zero to half a percent or even one, one and a quarter percent in rates, when we're talking by the end of the year, yeah, there's studies that show that's still very low rates, and we could still continue to see gains in the stock market. So, you know, from a fundamental perspective, just because you go from, you know, near zero to half, you know, anything you go up, you go from a quarter point to 50%, you've doubled the short term rates, but you're still at a 50 basis point uh, uh, federal funds rate which is next to nothing. That's almost for all intents and purposes about a zero rate. Uh, so again, all I'm trying to say here is we know the rates are coming and the Fed, they'll, they'll be as they always are reactive. If the market starts to get hot, uh, they're going to come in and they're going to change your trajectory. They'll have no choice. Um, I'm going to get to the commodities in just one second and tell you that that's what uh, the Thorne and Powell side is going to be. It has been. You know, he's uh, left uh, if, if, if commodities. If we didn't have broad-based inflation, not just commodities, everything, everything out there is just insanely high right now. And, you know, they like to chalk it up solely to um, supply side uh, uh, issues. No, it's the demand side. Uh, uh, there's enough evidence out there that shows demand's gone through the roof, retail sales and all this other stuff. All right, here it is. Um, you know, the uh, 200 days were right there, right where we were this morning, even a hair above. You've had now multiple uh, uh, chances to short a back test of the S&P 500, 200 day moving averages. We're right there right now. The blue line is the 200 day simple moving average. Uh, I've done this many times. You can do it on your own. Go back and see. It does a great job of support when you're above it. And when you break it, it is resistance. And that's where you want to short back. And remember, we haven't had the only real bear market we've had in recent years was when COVID hit. You got it right there. You shorted that. You did well. We had that big drop in the fourth quarter, 18. You shorted each bounce back. You did well. You go back to the last bear market uh, and you got to go to a weekly chart to do that. Turn off the lines and you can see here, this is a 40 week moving average. It's the same as a 200 day. I've got the exponential up. Let me stop the video. I'll put up the simple for you. Hold on one sec. Well, I put it up and actually, and this is again, I talk about all the time why I use both. There's the blue line there. Uh, and again, it does a great job of defining bull and bear trends. Just look at, you know, this is the bear market from 2000 and down to 2000 and late 02 uh, right there. Uh, bear market, I'm sorry, bull market, bear market. And again, 
there's really fewer things out there that does such a good job of defining the trends. And the point I'm trying to make is I'm going to turn off um, the 200 day. I thought it might show a little better. Oh, no, no wonder. It's, I got it. I just threw it up for you, but I forgot to change the setting to 40. There we go. Now you can see it even better, uh, just how well a job it does of acting as support and resistance. But there are times where the 200-day exponential, that is my preferred go-to, especially with tech. Um, and so I'm going to show you something real quick. We're going to zoom in just to the last uh, bear market, other than COVID, the one back from 2007 to uh, 2009. Uh, let me zoom in a little bit here for you. And I'll take this one back as well. And we'll look at that bear market. So you can see here, there's the 200 simple. It moves slower. That's the only difference. Exponential, the way it's calculated, it's a faster moving average based on the calculation method. Um, and you can see that red line. I'm going to I'm gonna tune this down a little bit. I'll just leave that one up for later use. And I could always turn it back on. But uh, just look at this. This is when the last bear market hit. You took it out right there. You came in and back tested. You overshot slightly for a week or two, but any rallies back to it were rejected until you finally crossed right there after that last rejection. And at that point, you can see here the 200 simple, I just turned it off, uh, tended to contain the pullback. So again, they're both there. Uh, we go back to where we are today and that's it. So you have an opportunity right now um, to uh, short uh, both of those. And again, on the daily chart, it comes in right there a little better. Um, yeah, right there. Boom. So that's it. And again, there's no guarantees. You stop there. Sometimes you overshoot it, but you have that recent range. You have that all-time high. There's that trading range. So there is my scaling zone. Uh, and, uh, you know, you can try to try to be a hero and shoot for the top of it, squeeze out every penny, and you may get it. Heck, you may come on up and take out out, and we can do this. Very, very, very possible. There's still work to be done. But I like to start here, layer in there, be at a full position if we get there. And what does that mean? Well, Randy, what if I only took a half position now and I wait? Well, you can take a full position, add it up to a full short position when the recent lows goes, because that should be a good night for the S&P 500. And we should go on to hit my next targets. Again, I prefer the Qs. Um, there's QQQ, next target down here at about 299.15 or so. You know, if you shorted it right now or today on that, that pop, you get about a 15% drop. And then IWM, IWM is just, this is this is a breakdown that's not even questionable. I mean, that was, look, can it prove to be a whipsaw? No matter what, it's not even a whipsaw because you already shorted and you were able to cover on that first. You know, I told you that, so I added that level there for you last week, 192.15. So that's probably where we're going to bounce. And that was a good almost 9% from there course you know the sell signals on the broad market came when uh, we were closer to the top and uh, that's the next target down there 171 but uh, what I want to say is this is a solid breakdown so uh, if IWM happens to bounce back and there could be you know they may come in and buy it uh, I think Powell's statements today the Fed statements will be taken as uh, you know dovish um, certainly could have been and should have been in my opinion a lot of others more hawkish at this point in time based on you know uh well let's let's tell me will tell you why right here okay so there's many measures of inflation uh, a lot of people don't trust the government's reporting on the cpi they believe it understates uh, inflation um you you know if you but do your own grocery shopping or whatever you buy whatever your things are uh, i like to for kicks and giggles i buy a lot on amazon and go back just go go to your orders and then look at items the same items that you ordered a uh, year or two ago a couple years ago uh you'll see that almost everything has gone up and they've gone up, it's probably those items have probably gone up more than the uh, rate of inflation that the government's reporting. But here's one you can look at. You can always go to just a simple uh, you know, uh, commodity ETF like GSG. This is the iShares GSCI Global Commodity Index Trust Fund. It's got energy, agricultural, industrial metals, livestock, precious metals. So you got it all in here given it's weighted pretty heavy to energy, but we, we've seen the same thing with ag commodities. So this is what this is what's happening here. Uh, Powell is not putting the brakes on. He should be, he's not even tapping the brakes. He's talking about tapping the brakes. The guy should be slamming the brakes on. And look, I don't want 
well, look, I'll, I, I want to do whatever, trade whatever comes. If the market crashes, I'll trade the crash and make money off it. I don't wish ill on the economy or anything. I don't wish the, you know, the stock market to drop 30, 40% just so I can make a profit and everyone's 401k goes down. But this is going to hurt the economy in the long run and cause a bigger crash if, if it's not uh, stopped. This, this, this inflation, this surge of inflation. Um, you have, you know, zero alternatives with safe money investments because of Powell. Uh, and the Fed, you know, um, forcing everybody in. It started, you know, well before Powell, um, even before um, I mean, Janet Yellen. Uh, it goes back for uh, a way. So, uh, anywho, this is this is the biggest risk to the um, uh, to the economy, in my opinion. You get this uh, runaway inflation, and you know they've done so at a time where again it was the fed's own you know their own words they've they've come out and said it they've talked about the wealth effect they gunned the stock market uh flooded the you know flooded the system with liquidity kept rates super low uh in large part to boost the wealth effect which you know causes stocks to go up and people have that hunky dory rosy feeling and they spend money and it and it worked but it you know it uh, again overstimulated my opinion and then what that does it causes this inflation and now you have valuations when you look at things like the Schiller P ratio and other metrics of valuations that it is historical if not all time highs so you can't keep pushing up valuations because what you then do is you set the market up for the next crash not correction when you finally especially when the fed's finally going to be forced to put this down because commodities are showing no signs of slowing the stock market did stock market's worrying about rates going up it's starting to roll over but commodities continue as i just showed you to go through the roof crude oil uh at all time high what do you think that impact's going to have on the economy when if crude continues to to go up uh there's measurable um uh uh, measurable impacts on GDP. I've seen studies that show that every blah, 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 whatever it is, five, ten dollar increase in the barrel of oil uh, has a, you know, a, a set measurable effect on the GDP. And um, what happens with crude oil, and I've seen it before, it just hits a flash point. It's going up, up, up. Everybody's ignoring those prices. But right now, again, it's not crude oil only. It's, it's, it's a broad based um, uh, bull market and commodities and uh, in all aspects, including agricultural commodities and, and you know, the biggest inputs to consumer price index are food and housing uh, and energy, those three really. And they're all really, really on fire right now. So, all right, I'm rambling and it's all fundamental stuff. I'll tell you that. So markets are going to do what they want to do if they want to continue to defy uh, fundamentals. They're going to go up. No, fundamentals are strong because the earnings have been strong with companies. Again, these super low rates have allowed companies like Apple, for example. I talked about this a few years back. Apple is one of the most cash-rich companies in the world. But a few years back, they started selling bonds. Why would a company, if you know Finance 101, companies sell bonds when they need to raise money for capital expenditures? Apple did it solely because they could because they had such a good credit rating and interest rates were so low. Why not turn around and sell bonds with at a near zero rate? You're borrowing money at a, a uber low cost, so almost free. You know, they don't sell it at zero, but they're, you know, a couple percentage points and turn around and buy your company stock. And that's what they've done. So a lot of the rise in the market, by the way, has not been just solely based on fundamentals of um, the companies, but financial engineering with stock buybacks and things like that. And again, it's the, uh, you know, it's one of the biggest bubbles uh, that we're seeing in, in, in really in history. And uh, we'll see. It's going to go until it goes. All right. So all I can do, guys, that's just fundamental ramblings. That That's everything I just said there is nothing new. This has been happening for a while now. What what I can help you with here, uh, you know, is give you levels that uh, whether you're a bull or bear, these are levels you want to see taken out. Bulls want to see a recovery back into this range. Uh, and obviously, I think we're close to the highs of that. Uh, and they want to see the technicals change. I might not flip from, you know, uh, longer term bearish to bullish if we got in that range, if I can make, you know, if I'm not seeing uh, market improvement in uh, market internals, you know, that's the breadth, uh, sentiment indicators, valuations, other things. Technicals will always be my guide first and foremost, but I'm speaking a lot to the fundamentals of what's going on right now. And those same market uh, warning crash, warning crash Market crash warnings that I issued recently are still in effect. Uh, there are still the conditions at this point in time. Nothing's changed in the last couple of weeks. We have conditions ripe for a 
a very swift drop in the markets. And all I can say is these are the levels that if you want to try to game it, where you can add shorts. Um, but if we start going like this in the next few weeks, it's not going to be objective to add as we get down to and, and approach each of these uh, longer term targets there. So that's it. There I gave you near term levels, expect volatility, chop and slop. It's still, um, we're still fresh off the meeting. Powell's probably talking now. I don't know. I turned off the, uh, uh, the CNBC feed. And then it'll take uh, at least until after the press conference to, to really determine which way is this is this bullish falling wedge on the euro going to break out, you know, and it can certainly have some more downside. The divergences, even on another thrust down here to the bottom of that support range, it's going to keep those divergences intact. But if they're ultimately burned through with lower lows in the RSI and PPO that take out these lows and the divergences are gone and the support gives way, then that's going to be uh, bearish for the euro, uh, bullish for the dollar. Um, so we'll, we'll see where that happens. But right now, that's still a bullish setup in the euro, which is bearish for the dollar. And as I spoke earlier, if that plays out to the upside, we've got a solid breakout and start moving up. That's going to help the precious metals. And, uh, and what also would help the precious metals is a flight to safety if uh, we do get another leg down here in the market soon. So that's it. Uh, you have all the levels. You have my thoughts. You have what uh, could be a bear flag. So one way to look at it, too, if you want to kind of uh, sharpen your pencil on a timing uh, here draw a little flag let me see if that shows any better on a, let's say let's go to about a two hour chart yeah you could do that maybe and uh, uh, draw an uptrend line off the recent lows that would be the bottom of that flag and I think if you waited for a one or two hour candle to break down that would be the breakdown that you want so again a uh, bear flag consists of three components. Uh, the first move, first one is a what we call flag pole. That's an impulsive move down. Um, then you have a level of uh, a, a, a consolidation or actually a rise that happens on declining volume, which I can see down here, uh, lower volume. Then you have a breakout. You want to see it impulsive, and typically uh, the move coming out of the flag will be equally as impulsive. And the measured target is the distance of the flag, the longest point added to the top of the flag, uh, bear flag. And I'll just give you what that would be, uh, assuming that's, yeah, that's where the impulsive selling started. So you just take a line uh, and then take drag that line and put it down here. And let's see where that comes in. That comes in at uh, 393. And what did I give you on my next target here? 394 almost. Yep, 394. Close enough for government work. That would take it down to that next target there on uh, the S&P 500. And real quick, let's just for kicks and giggles, take a look at uh, QQQ. Similar flag here. It's your flagpole. I mean your bear flag right there. And, you know, we'll use, uh, we can take, we can be conservative and use this as the flag there. There's another impulsive leg down, but that's what I, the one I'd use. And drag and place that there. That's going to give us a target of roughly uh, 307 versus my next target on the weekly chart of 299. Close enough. All right. 300, 307. On a 300 point index, you know, every three points is only 1%. So you're talking that 307 measured target was uh, only 2% above that uh, uh, T2 right there. So there it is, guys. That's where I think we're going. And uh, if we do, it's going to happen quick if I'm right, because that's the nature of a bear flag. They play out pretty quick. So I think we could get there in a week or so. This has been Randy Finney with Right Side of the Chart. Have a great day.